Hello students, how are you? So today we are going to explain about sound and materials. To start with, I have here a machine or an instrument. If you finished answering the workbook pages that I gave you as a homework, then you encountered this machine already and you are familiar with what is its name, right? So uh, this machine is known as oscilloscope. Now an oscilloscope is an instrument that shows the shape and size of the sound wave. It has a microphone attached to it, so the microphone converts the sound energy into an electrical energy, and the electrical energy is being interpreted by the machine shown as a sound wave. Okay, I have here another instrument, as you can see on the screen. There is a number being shown and then at the top of the instrument is a, micro a microphone where it will receive the sound and this instrument is known as the sound level meter or sound meter now sound meter is used to measure the volume of the sound in decibel the short form is D and a capital letter B so decibel is the unit for sound. Now I have here some common sound level in decibels. To start with, we have the threshold of human hearing around at zero decibel. So that means this is the start. Okay, so it, you have to exceed the zero decibel in order for us to hear the sound. When say threshold, it means the start of something. Then we have soft whisper around 20 decibels. In a quiet library, we have around 40 decibels. Normal conversation is 60 decibels. Busy traffic, we have 70 decibels. And then at 85 decibels, ear damage starts. Okay, now listening to a loud rock music is around 115 decibels. So that means at this rate, it can damage your ear. And then the threshold of pain is 120 decibels. That means at this decibels, you are going to start to feel pain. And then air rate siren is 125 decibels. And jet plane taking off is around 140 decibels. So those are some of the common sound level in decibels. In our previous lesson, we learned that sound needs a medium to travel. And when we say medium, this can be solid, liquid, or gas. So in solid, the particles are very close together, while in liquid, they are not too far, yet not too close, and the particles can slide to one another. While in gas, they are very far apart to each other. Now, to give you an idea on how the vibration is being passed from particle to particle, so I have here um, a billiard. And as you can see how the, the balls are, are moving as it was hit by the cue ball. Okay? So that is how the vibrations in particles like in air, solid, and liquid is being passed from one another. Now, at which state do you think the sound traveled the fastest? Is it solid, liquid, or gas? Now, based from the closeness of the particles, then it will be solid, because the particles of solid are closer together, thus vibrations are more easily passed from particle to particle. 
Now remember, the closer the particles of the medium, the faster the sound travels. Now the next question is, can sound travel in the outer space? Like this one. The answer? No. Outer space is a vacuum. There is no air where sound can travel. And when we say vacuum, it is a region or an area that contains few or no particles. Always remember, unlike light, sound needs a medium in order for it to travel. So sound can travel with a medium. Now the question, how fast sound can travel? Let's start with gas, wherein the particles are far apart. In air, for example, the sound can travel around 343 meters per second. While in liquid, it's around 1,482 meters per second. And in solid, like metal, we have 6,000 meters per second. Now, to compare the speed of the sound to the speed of light, the speed of light is 299,792,458 meters per second, or around 300 million meters per second. That's how fast light is. Okay? That is why whenever we see lightning, we see the light first and then followed by the sound or the thunder. Because light travels faster, much faster than the sound. Okay, to prove that sound cannot travel in a vacuum or in the outer space, scientists use this uh, bell jar experiment. Now, a bell jar is a jar that is made of glass and it is shaped like a bell. Now, in a bell jar, we have the electronic bell, which is the, the sound source, and then we have the vacuum pump that will take in or suck in the air inside the bell jar. Okay? Now, if the air is present in jar, then the sound is heard. Now, turning on the vacuum pump, so the air is gradually removed, then what will happen? Less sound is heard. Now, if inside the bell jar is a, a vacuum or no air, then no sound is heard. Now, sound is very important for us. However, if you are working or if someone is working on the runway of the airport, okay, so they don't need this much of sound. So because in the airport, for example, the jet plane taking off is around 140 decibels. And we said a while ago that the threshold of pain is 120 decibels and ear damage starts at 85 decibels. So if this person is working uh, in the runway, okay, so there will be a danger for him that his uh, ears will be damaged or uh, every time that he is going to work, he is going to feel pain. Now, he is wearing something to protect his ears. And what do we call this? We call them ear defenders, sometimes known as ear protectors or ear mufflers. Now, ear defenders contain materials such as foam that absorb the energy in the sound waves and reduce the loudness of the sound. Okay, so ear defenders uh, do not remove all the sound. I want you to take note that the function is just to reduce or decrease 
the loudness of the sound because it will be also dangerous if that person will not be hearing any sound at all right because he will not be able to know whether um, there will be something behind him okay or some something that uh, a danger approaching him for example now when we say absorb it means the the sound energy is being converted into another form of energy like heat energy so the best materials that absorb sound are soft thick and even porous material they are the best when it comes to muffling the sound when say muffling from the word muffle that means to cover something in order for to reduce the sound or the volume of the sound okay we are not uh, reducing the sound only in the workplace but also at home so I have your picture so name the three things in the picture that muffle the sound or reduce the loudness of the sound so we have here this one is the curtain as you can see the, the surface is uneven and then we have the carpet and lastly we have the sofa okay so this three things are used in this room in order to reduce the sound so we already know now what will happen to the sound when it hits a material which is soft thick and uneven right the sound will be absorbed but what will happen to the sound when it hits a flat firm surface like this one so the sound energy much of the energy will bounces back right and this bouncing back of sound is known as echo so echo is a reflected sound just like light right we call that the, the the bouncing back of light as reflection now in sound the sound can also bounce back and we call this one echo so what will happen from the source it will hit the wall for example and then it will bounce back to the persons or to the source and we call this one echo now always remember the energy of the sound from the source is different from the energy of the echo it is much less because some of the energy are already absorbed by the wall so you are going you can experience this echo for example in the bathroom right wherein there is no much material there that can absorb the sound that is why sometimes your singing voice is much better when you are doing it in the bathroom when you are singing in the bathroom right and it's quite different if you are going to sing in your room for example so that's it for our sound and materials now these there are four things that we have learned today that sound needs medium to travel through it travels the fastest in solid and slowest in gas and then sound cannot travel in a vacuum because of the absence of particles then the volume of the sound can be reduced using soft thick and even material and then echo is a reflected sound from a flat firm surface so that's it for today thank you and have a nice day